Hey guys, so I've been using a new ROM lately and I thought I would show you guys what it is and what features it has compared to other ROMs and um, actually you'd be surprised of what it is. So let's jump right into this. It's going to be a quick overview and look at the Pac-Man ROM. Now what is the Pac-Man ROM? The Pac-Man ROM consists of three ROMs all in one. It's the Paranoid Android, Sinajamod, and AOKP ROM. It is based off of AOKP so that is the pretty much foundation of the ROM itself but it has features from all the other ROMs as well. So um, it's pretty much uh, the same as Sign and Jamaa. This is a uh, Nova Launcher that I have, so it's a little different. These icons are apps, but the, they're custom icons, so don't worry about those. These uh, are the actual icons, though, with the icon package. Anyways, that doesn't matter. The, what matters is the features that are packed into this ROM. So like I said, it's uh, three different ROMs packed into one. It's AOKP uh, Sign and Jamaa 10.1, and Paranoid Android. Now that's a lot to take in and it's feature packed like crazy. So as you can see the settings are more tablet based. You have the slider on the left and also slider on the right <clears throat> to whatever option you choose. So if I go here to um, let's say lock screen, I have my lock screen options pop up on the right. That is really cool. I like that about the settings. Uh, it seems easier to navigate. You could jump from one thing to another very easily without having to go back and forth. Now, as you can see, this is the Nexus 4, and the Nexus 4 has no hardware buttons. So you're thinking, how do you go back? Well, Paranoid Android has this feature called Pi. And what Pi is, is pretty much a gesture a soft keys that pop up. So right here, if I scroll from the bottom, I get all my buttons right here, and it highlights what I'm scrolling over. So you have all your options still there, readily available, and it gives you a little bit more uh, screen real estate here. So instead of having keys on the bottom, I could slide up and go to my home, go back, to, or you know, pop up all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. I like that about it. And if you want your Google Now feature, it's right here. So don't even have to worry about that. And after a while, you get really used to it, and it is really worth the extra screen real estate you get. Although it's not much, but it really makes a difference, and it's just better to have. And it's very intuitive after a while. So. It's not like you even have to think about it, and plus you have all these other features that pop up, so your quick settings go up if you scroll all the way up. And as you can see, I'm, I'm already pretty used to it, so that's that. Also, if you notice, the, my navigation bar, my navigation bar, excuse me, is extremely tiny. It is, um, it's based off. This is in phablet mode, which I should show you before I go any further. So over here, if you go into your settings, Paranoid Android has this hybrid property. And right here, you could uh, have it as stock, you could have it in phablet mode, tablet mode, and there's different uh, DPI settings and resolution settings for the tablet mode. So starting off over here would be you know, a smaller resolution, or a, excuse me, a lower resolution, and then it gradually goes higher and higher. So if you were on a tablet, this would probably be where you would want to go. But you could put this on the phone, it, is, it looks kind of strange, I'll show you an example. So let's go over here and apply it, and as you can see, it's doing its thing. And now if I go here, it's in tablet mode. Tablet mode would have the navigation on the bar, but since I have the Pi control, that is why it's not showing up. So let me turn off the Pi control. And there you go. See on the bottom now, I have uh, where oh, messed up my icons there. But uh, as you can see, now my buttons are on the bottom. My, and if I was to uh, check my notifications, it would be that way instead of being on the top. So you save a little real estate that way if you want your buttons and your status bar on the bottom. But the battery is really hard to see, so I don't know, it's kind of weird on the phone. But like I said, uh, you could really go either way with this. I like to use the phablet mode, and I'll show you why right now. Actually, I have my profile backed up, so if you go to tools, you can back up and restore your um, profile that you set up. So. Ah, uh, okay, I didn't expect that. Here's the boot screen. It's kind of cool. It's got a little Pac-Man, but I don't know why it gets cut off with the LG over there. It really doesn't bother me because I barely restart my phone anyway. Back here, as you can see, we're still in the uh, phablet mode, or we're back to phablet mode, I should say. So um, if I go over here, I hold it down, hit the expand desktop, it's going to get rid of the bottom uh, soft keys, and it's going to give me my Pi controls back. So you could uh, restore and back up your uh, preferences. And what's cool is if you really wanted to get um, really detailed, 
you could have these colors correspond depending on what app you're in. So instead of white, they could be red depending what app you're in. Same goes for the soft keys that pop up and the soft keys in general. Um, you could also make the bottom soft keys transparent. So much customization is in here, it's unbelievable. So going back to hybrid properties, if you did want to go, uh, there's once again, you could choose what type of UI you want. And over here in apps, you can specify what kind of, um, like what happens in each app and there are different settings. So it is very customizable and it is crazy how, how much, uh, how many features they packed into this. But um, like I said, the reason I use phablet mode is uh, for mainly this reason. Number one, it makes the top status bar thinner, which is something I like. Um, but the, the downside to that is all the like resolutions are much higher and it's harder to see. But that's not a problem because it's still pretty good. So as you can see, if I drop down on the left, I have my um, notification bar. If I drop down from the right, I have my quick settings. So that's really cool about it. And with uh, Android 4.2, which this is running, you could easily just hold something and it pops up and boom, you have that. So that's why I use phablet mode. Also with the expanded desktop, you really have a lot of screen real estate than the stock version. So let's go back to the settings and let me show you a few more things here. So, um, oh, another thing. So the Gmail app on the tablets is a little different than um, than the phone version. The phone version is just a list of all your emails. But uh, with the if you set it up properly, you can have your list like this, where it's the inbox and all that stuff. On the right side, you have your emails, which I'm going to black out because uh, they're sensitive emails. So that's kind of cool. Now going back into the settings, um, these are the AOKP settings, and these is like a feel it's a league of its own over here so you could customize everything in here um, what I don't like is when you press it it goes into its own little uh, window over here I wish they left it like the settings uh, in this in this configuration here where it's split but that's still kind of cool you could really go into each one of these how the lock screen lo looks and it's just packed with so much customization um, I really leave I leave mine really simple because it's just it gets overwhelming a little bit but you could have vibration patterns you could record uh, LED notifications which you could set up I have it set up for a couple of different apps over here and it's uh you could customize how they blink how bright they are it is just nuts um, the sound just it goes on and on of how much customization there is in this ROM which is actually three different ROMs put together the Pac-Man ROM this will not be found on every single device but um, it's on a lot of the more I guess uh, widespread devices you have performance performance control um, let's see what else we got here I think uh, themes is uh, signage mod themes work I'm using a signage mod theme here so as you can see, it's really, really black. It's the hollow black theme. If you're curious of which one it is, it could be found in the Play Store. Um, over here, the Pi controls are here. The trigger area, you could slide it from the right. You could slide it from the left. You could slide it from the top. It depends. Wherever you want your Pi control, you could have them there. The size of the Pi control, the gap between the buttons, uh, the, you could change the colors of it. It's just, it's amazing how much features or how many features get packed into this ROM. And... Um, there are a bunch of other ROMs similar to this where they have three different ROMs in one. But uh, I used, I think, three different ones before Pac-Man was released on the Nexus 4, or it was more stable, I should say. And those kept having different crashes. The system UI would crash, and it was just completely filled with um, all kinds of glitches, and it was unstable. But Pac-Man ROM is, has been smooth since I've been using it for almost a week now. And it is just as smooth as can be. It's just as smooth as signage mod. As you can see, I have the animation sped up and is I have no problems. Um, the Pi controls on the over here on the bottom. That was not a very good example, but they pop up whenever I want them to. So I don't really have any issues with that. Um, if you are you currently using signage mod, I highly recommend switching to the Pac-Man ROM. Um, it's just it's so feature packed and it, it includes everything. That uh, signage mod has the from the rep, uh, notification reply to uh, the charging status uh, LED to all kinds of features. It, it includes features from every 
ROM that is uh, packed into here. So I'm going to keep this short. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll put a link in the description for the Nexus 4 uh, Pac-Man download page, which is on xdadevelopers.com. Um, so props to the Pac-Man team. Props to all the developers that worked on the various ROMs that went into this. And um, yes, so let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.